Hey guys, today's episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast is presented by our new partners, Cedarville University, one of the leading Christian universities in the country. And they're well known for excellent academic programs that equip graduates for lifelong ministry and service, including Cedarville's brand new Master of Athletic Training degree. Now, Cedarville University's athletic training program is accredited by the Commission on Accreditation of Athletic Training Education. Students are taught by outstanding professors who are experienced in the athletic training profession, including their program director, Mike Weller, who has worked with the Cincinnati Bengals and with the NFL. You see, what sets Cedarville's MAT program apart is the opportunity for students to earn a bachelor's degree in sport medicine, including a Bible minor, and then the Master of Athletic Training in just five years. And it's all from a biblical worldview. They also offer a two-year standalone master's program for students who've already completed a bachelor's degree elsewhere. Now, I've been on Cedarville's campus. It's fantastic, and I can attest to you that it has great facilities, wonderful athletic programs, wonderful academic programs, and a fantastic faculty. In fact, the MAT is housed in newly renovated spaces with the latest technology. So I want to encourage you to visit cedarville.edu slash athletic training to learn more about this new innovative Master of Athletic Training program. That's cedarville.edu slash athletic training to learn more about Cedarville University's new Master of Athletic Training program. Make sure you go check it out today. This is Sports Spectrum, the intersection of sports and faith, where we bring Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. And welcome everyone to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. We're so glad that you're tuning into the show today. And we got a great conversation with Jason Adam, pro baseball pitcher, coming up in just a second. First, I want to tell you about our website, sportspectrum.com. Mentioned it millions of times on this podcast, but there's a reason why I keep mentioning it because it's updated with content every single day. New articles, new stories, devotionals, podcasts, all available for free. And it's all at the website, sportspectrum.com. So make that a place to go and visit every single day. Bookmark it if you still do that sort of thing on your website. I know I do. And make it a place to go back to each and every day for the latest conversations, the latest articles, the latest devotionals on the intersection of sports and faith over at sportsspectrum.com. And we got a great conversation today with Jason Adam, who was on the show back in the spring of 2019 after he had made his Major League Baseball debut as a pitcher with the Kansas City Royals back in 2018. Now, this is a guy who has been through it in this pro baseball career He was originally a fifth rounder in 2010 in the MLB draft by the Kansas City Royals as a high school kid, and now it's 11 years later, and he has gone up and down and all around when you think about this pro baseball career, injuries, surgeries, I mean, you name it, Jay has been through it, but I loved when I had him on a couple years back talking to him, the humility that just... Uh, just flows from Jason Adam when you hear him talk about his career, his family, his marriage with his lovely wife, Kelsey, and certainly his relationship with the Lord. He's now pitched four seasons in Major League Baseball with the Royals, the Blue Jays, and the past couple years with the Chicago Cubs. But it was 2021 that we spend the majority of this conversation on because this is about as up and down and crazy of a year as you will ever hear from a professional athlete and Jason Adam has been through it crazy injury turning 30 minor leagues major leagues it was just such a crazy year but Jay was trusting God through it all and I think you're going to love hearing about Jason Adam and his 2021 professional baseball season right now on Sports Spectrum Jason Adam, welcome to Sports Spectrum, buddy. How you doing? 
I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm good, man. I should say welcome back to Sports Spectrum. We had you on, I think it was in 2019, early 2019, if I'm not mistaken, on the time. And you had just made your your MLB debut previously in 2018 with Kansas City. And it was such a cool time to have you on and kind of learn more about your journey and uh, about achieving that opportunity to play in the big leagues. So much has happened since then. Um, So it's good to have you back on the show, buddy. Um, But I do want to spend the majority of this pod uh, kind of talking to you about last year, about 2021. Um, What a year this was for everybody, but what a year this was for you. Um, The good, the bad, and the ugly in some ways. So let's go back in time and start this, say, a year ago at this time, early 2021. I believe you were on the Cubs preparing for the 21 season. What was your mindset as you think back to that point uh, coming off of, of course, the COVID shortened 2020 season? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, baseball wise, I had had a pretty good 2020. Um, So I was kind of set up for like my first real chance at making an opening day roster. So that was kind of my off season mindset. Um, And so that was my baseball focus through the off season and then went into spring training and, and thankfully performed well enough. Um, everything fell in the right place and I was able to make the opening day roster. So, that, so my 2021 season got off to a, a great start. It was a cool experience for me. Obviously, it was like a third of the crowd at Wrigley, but still, I mean, really cool experience and uh, to make my first opening day at Wrigley. So I no complaints there. Right. No, that's awesome. How about uh, after all you've been through kind of your mindset from a faith perspective, just where God and you kind of were, if you will, yeah. at that point, and just, you know, understanding that things looked like they were going really well for you from a baseball perspective, but what about mm-hmm. from a uh, connection with God? Yeah, that's a great question because I think, um, at least for me and from some friends that I've had conversations with, uh, when things are going well, it's almost, um, harder on my relationship with God. You know, I start thinking uh, things are going well because I'm, I'm doing good things or because, you know, and I can start relying on my own power um, instead of just fully relying on God and trusting him with everything, knowing that I could do everything right and never play baseball again, or I could do everything wrong. And he could, for some reason, give me a 15 year multi hundred million dollar career, you know, so it's like, it's all in his hands. He's entrusted it to us to a certain extent to steward well. Um, so that's kind of, it's always like my focus when things are going well is to try to like humble myself um, under God, you know, mm-hmm. but I think if I'm being honest, when things are going well, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with that aspect of self-sufficiency. Do you struggle with the aspect of performance-based approval as well in the sense of sports and your yep. job and your role is all based on that. Yeah. And our relationship with God obviously isn't. Yeah. It, it can be really hard to separate. And um, it, I mean, even to the extent where in the past it's been like, well, I didn't send there. So I should be due to pitch well tonight, you know, or like, or <laughs> I, I did, I messed up there. So we'll see what happens tonight. Like I'll probably get rocks, um, yeah. which is just not how God works at all. Um, but like you said, it, it's our, it's our world in general, but especially in the sports world, it's so performance driven. It's hard to um, not let that leak over into your walk with God. Um, and by his grace, it's getting better all the time, but still a work in progress. As I, I mentioned the start in 2021, but I was, I was thinking more about um, our conversation as we're talking here, 2020 was kind of interesting too, with the COVID year, uh, the yeah. beginning of COVID and sort of the shortened baseball season, and you started mm-hmm. to establish yourself. You said you had a good good year that year. What was that time like trying to establish yourself, find a team, and with all the COVID protocols and all the uncertainty and everything going on, what was that season like? Very interesting would be like the only word I could use to describe it. It was great for us. I started off at the alternate site, mm. um, which was South Bend, Indiana, um, which is not necessarily paradise. Um, but, uh, it's, yeah. it, it, we ended up loving it. It, it. That's what God tends to do. He puts us in some obscure places. And then, you know, I, because of the nature of the schedule of the alternate site, I got a ton of good time with my wife and daughter, um, and a ton of really, really good time to work on like 
the foundation of my baseball skill um, in a way that you can't really do during a minor league season. And I think that helped kind of catapult me to then when about a month ish into the season, I got called up to Chicago, I was able to thrive. And I think that's because of the work that these coaches put into me in that weird setting. Um, and I think it, it was a blessing in disguise. You mentioned um, time with your daughter. You should actually add an S on that, right? Because it's yeah, daughter. Yeah. Now it's three. Daughters now. Um, what is it like to be a girl dad and, and be in it, girl dad mode? Girl dad is the best. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I have no boys, so I, I can't say. But I, I love my girls. I think um, I can see them becoming daddy's girls, um, which I love. And I rub in my wife's face all the time. But uh, they're, st- <laughs> they're still mama's girls. But uh I mean, it's just so fun seeing their little their little souls and see their smiles light up when you tell them they look pretty. Um, you know, I I it's I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. What have you learned about yourself and becoming a dad? Because I know for me that was such a really cool um I don't know, blessing from God when I became a father, but there's so much that you learn when you're the dad of a daughter, uh, and it grows and it evolves and and changes, and you've been doing the dad thing now for what, three plus years, right? Yeah. Since 2018. Yeah. So three and almost four years now. Um, what have, what have you learned about yourself in, in becoming a dad? Man, uh, uh, how selfish I am and <laughs> yeah. even more so was, I'm like, you learn a little bit how selfish you are when you get married, but then when kids come into the picture, it's, it's not, it's a whole new ball game. Um, mm. but so I've learned that, but then also like just, um, how like freeing it can be to be intentional and have that really intentional time, which is something I I was never good at, you know, like intent sitting there and telling somebody like how much I love them and what I love about them. When it's your daughter, you look at them, you're like, I need to like pour into this soul. And then I'm like, well, maybe I should actually start like doing this for my wife too. And maybe I should start doing this for even some of my friends. And it would obviously look different, but, um, so just the value and intentionality I've seen, but yeah, it's revealed to me how selfish I, I can be. Jason Adam is with us on sports spectrum. Um, you get to the beginning of the season and you make the opening day roster. You mentioned a year ago in 2021, um, but then you're sent down to Iowa and it's kind of like this up and down world yeah. of professional baseball. Does the business side of being a pro athlete um, ever steal a little bit of the joy of just going out and trying to pitch each and every day. Yeah, I, I, yes, I had, well, yes, but when you let it, so I, I, it really can steal the joy when you let it, Mm. Um, you know, I've, and this year was a time where I let it steal the joy from it. You know, I think um, especially with the family in the picture, you start thinking like, if I pitch bad tonight, I got to leave my family and head to Des Moines, you know, or I have to pack up our whole house and head to, and maybe only be there a day and then call back up. And so there's that, it's a really weird dynamic. Um, but my wife, Kelsey, as she would admit, just like I admit that with, there's times where we've handled it really well. And that's usually when we're actually like walking closely with the Lord. And it's like, all right, God, like you knew this was happening. This is in your hands. And then there's times like, where we're like, what are you doing, God? Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> you know, play the victim card. Um, yeah. but it's it's definitely hard. I I think it's hard regardless, but you can certainly um still keep the joy of playing within it. What's the wildest story you have of kind of going up and down and realizing you're going here, then you're going there and you're back here, or you're somewhere else? Do you have a yeah. pretty crazy story you can share? Um, I, I have, a few. well, the, the funniest one was when I was with Kansas city in 18, we were in Minnesota. I got optioned. I landed as, so I flew back to Kansas city cause I'm from here. Um, mm-hmm. and just what came home, I was like, I'll eat dinner at home and then I'll head to Omaha tomorrow. Um, I land, make the 45 minute drive home, get a text from the assistant GM. Hey, we need you back tomorrow. Like <laughs> and it's like, so I flew back, didn't even miss it. I missed one game. Um, but not even a day of time, you know? So it's like, and then back in Minnesota and back and ended up staying around for a few weeks. Oh. So it's just like that. And that's not abnormal. Almost that's what I was going to say, because there's, yeah. out, to the outside world, those listening, they're like, man, that's crazy. Aren't you just on a team and you stay with the team forever? 
But inside right. the baseball world, people realize this is not abnormal at all. No, especially as a reliever, I think uh, you're just kind of their their pawns, and and that's fair. I mean, it's a business, sure. Um, so, yeah, you're just kind of their pawns. Obviously, some teams do it better than others, but it is the reality is it's a business, and they're going to try to win however they see fit. Hmm. You had a pretty crazy injury uh, last yeah. April, I believe it was. Let's talk about that a little bit. Tell us about the injury um, and what took place. Because it wasn't on the field in the sense of you pitching and everybody right. saw it take place. In fact, when I heard about it, I was like, wait, what happened? Tell everybody right. what, what went on there. Yeah, so it was May, mid-May, mid or late May. May. Okay. Um, but uh, I, w- I just got sent to Iowa, sent down to, to Iowa there a couple of days. I'm one of the few pitchers that loves shagging BP. Um, you know, so, and then, so I'm shagging, um, the injury happened while I was shagging our friend. Um, I, I used to play for Kansas city. Omaha was in town, their triple eight team. So I went over to talk to some of the guys mm. kind of protect them while they played catch. Um, and the looping line drive was hit. I jumped up for the ball. Didn't think, um, anything of it landed, heard a pop and I've, like fell or I was on the ground and I was like, huh, like, man, I think I might've sprained my ankle. Um, and then I looked down, I was like, oh my gosh, I could see the, uh, the bone sticking out of the skin, the foot turned, mm. um, 90 degrees. So I'm like, I start yelling like trainer. And then the next, ironically, the next pitch, the guy hits a line drive right at me. So I like duck it, I dodge it. Oh. Um, and then everyone kind of stopped and was like, Oh, um, oh. so it was, a bit of a bit of a panic there for a bit is that the and forgive me for just using his name but is that the gordon hayward injury i believe he had like a similar one when he was playing in the nba he just jumped up came down and the, and the whole leg kind of turned sideways yeah and is that I've, similar what happened is, i think so yeah it's it, mine was called an open ankle dislocation okay so it just fully dislocated and then the bone the fibula fibula maybe yeah. shot through the skin oh. um because it dislocated hard which it seems like a total fluke for a non-contact injury um, right yeah especially yeah. being a pitcher in baseball like that's not an injury if it was an injury you'd expect it to be like sliding into second you know or yes. something like that or yeah. going in hard yeah. on a double play yeah. ball or something but you're just out shagging balls um yep. the immediate 24 hours after that, what's kind of going through your mind? What's your mindset? I'm sure you yeah. obviously you went to the hospital and had your surgery right, right away, but what's your mindset kind of thinking through all of this and like, okay, God, another setback here. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah it, it was, that was probably one of the harder, um, 24 hour periods that I can recall in my life. I think, uh, and it, and it, fluctuated from my felt a ton of peace to like, I was really struggling. I think t- what hurt was I um, watched that Alex Smith documentary. Yes. Um, yeah. On like ESPN. Not long before the injury happened and his bone also broke, but the like danger in his was that it got infected. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking like, how is this not going to be infected on a triple a dirty baseball field? You know, I, I laid there for what felt like 30 minutes before the ambulance got there. Um, So like the fear started creeping in of what if this is infected? What if, you know? um, Yeah. So I could, I spiraled quickly there. Um, But then at the same time there, I had moments of really good peace because uh, that morning, my friend Dan Winkler had given me a book and I was reading it that morning before I went to the field. And uh, the whole chapter was on suffering and suffering well for like, to the glory of God and like how he meets you. And so I'm like, okay, God, like you knew this was going to happen. Um, but I, I really struggled for the first 24 hours and really the first um, few weeks were kind of hard on me. Hey guys, want to take a quick break and remind you again about our friends at Cedarville University, one of the leading Christian universities in the country and it's brand new master of athletic training program. What sets Cedarville's Master of Athletic Training program apart is the opportunity for students to earn a bachelor's degree in sport medicine and a Master of Athletic Training in just five years. That's it, five years. Or if you've already earned a bachelor's degree elsewhere, you only need two years to complete the MAT program. Cedarville University is the real deal. I've been on campus. I can attest it has great facilities, 
wonderful academic programs, and the faculty is second to none, including program director Mike Weller, who has worked for the Cincinnati Bengals as well as the NFL. So let me encourage you to visit cedarville.edu slash athletic training to learn more about Cedarville University's Master of Athletic Training program. Again, the website cedarville.edu slash athletic training. Cedarville University, I'm confident you'll be glad that you checked out their new Master of Athletic Training program. Jason Adam is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Jay, was there a moment where you thought after this injury and everything that you've been through that this might be it, that you'd never pitch again? Um, I didn't. That didn't cross. So that never – I never got to there. I got to actually <laughs> – in a more extreme way because I spiraled yeah. as I'm getting on the ambulance of the Alex Smith story. I'm like, what if it's infected and they try to like save my foot and then it spreads quicker. And now all of a sudden my life's on the line, you know, like Alex Smith. So I, that was the first time in my So you went further. Concert. You went even further yeah, than just I went not there pitching where I didn't even, I, I was, um, and I've told this to a few people. I, I, at the point I consider just telling the EMTs like, listen, if it's, if it looks remotely infected, just chop the foot off. Like, I'd rather, you know, yeah. I'd rather live than play baseball again. Yeah. Um, I didn't obviously say that, but it was, uh, that was kind of the place I was in. Um, but I never considered baseball because then after, you know, I had the surgery, I woke up, um, I talked to the doctor and I was like, so what's the prognosis? Um, and he's like, actually good. You know, he, he kind of gave me some comfort, like, you know, as long as this doesn't get infected, we're fine. Um, and so then it was just kind of praying against infection and um, trusting that. But yeah, so I went, I went deep uh, off the deep end a bit um, and felt some real fear, but um, you know how that goes. Well, it's, I mean, it's understandable. You're first of all, you're allowed to go wherever you want to go for a little bit there when you're suffering such a gruesome injury. Um, but then you go through rehab because we'll spoil this for a little bit. You actually make it back uh, to, right. to pitch in that same season, which is kind of crazy when I think I was watching the story up close from, uh, or not up close, but from afar, uh, mm -hmm. it was less than a, or about a four month span in between the injury and between you pitching, it might've even been less, um, yeah. take me through the summer and, and what that yeah. rehab was like. Um, was there a rehab or was it really just a matter of letting the, the ankle heal before you right. realize I might be able to pitch this year? You know, what was yeah. summer like for you? Um, it was interesting and interesting again, I guess. But uh, um, so I got I ended up getting released by the Cubs during like when I was still in the hospital, I think. But right. Insult to injury. But, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Yeah, you got hurt. Uh, you're also guys. not on the team anymore. <laughs> we need that roster spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, it that also worked out for good because then I was able to talk to the doctor and I was like, all right. I don't have the Cubs riding my rehab program. I don't need to be conservative. I'm like, what, how quick can I get back to game speed? And he's like, well, like, like three months, you can be pretty intense on it. So I'm like, okay, doing the math. It was like May 20th, June, July. I'm like, okay, that gives me September. That gives me the month of September. Mm. So what I did um, was I just started throwing on my knees for the first month or so then I got into a walking boot so I threw on that a little bit just to keep my arm moving so that um as I got um back with the team I could then like say hey I'm my arm's good to go we just need to get my ankle good and then I ended up signing back with the Cubs and kind of was like told my agent I was like make it contingent on the fact that they won't slow down my program like mm -hmm. that's or else you know um so like again like that insult to injury of getting released kind of worked out for good because I was able to expedite the program. And I had an awesome doctor in uh, Chicago, Dr. Kadakia. And he, he was really like, he was, he was uh, creative in ways to like, that I could still strengthen my ankle while I was in the cast or, you know, he, he helped the process too. So everything like God promises worked out for good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh in this aspect, the good actually lined up with what I was hoping for, too. Well, August 4th was kind of a pretty big day, too, in the midst of your rehab. And you turned the big 3-0 and you're 30 <laughs> yeah. years old last yeah. year. Uh, I have to imagine that birthday was a unique one in the sense that you're usually, I'm guessing, in an August 
around your birthday pitching somewhere. Right. Um, and this year, I don't think at this point in 2021, you were pitching yet. Um, no. so it must've been a unique birthday and probably some reflection was being done as you yeah. hit the big three Oh. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I was, man, I'm 30. This career is not where I thought it would necessarily be, but, <laughs> but yeah. the life is far better than I imagined. So, right. yes. um, but yeah, it was definitely, we were in Arizona at the time. So the, it was fun. I mean, my daughter's made me a little shirt, you know, and had fun with it and we had a good time. So no complaints there. And, and I got to enjoy my birthday with my family. So it wasn't all bad. It was great. Actually. Did you have some reflections as you turned 30 kind of thinking about like you just mentioned where life has brought you and life has kind of taken you, you mentioned yeah. this was not where you thought you'd be, but it's far exceeded in some ways, maybe even yeah. many ways where yeah. you thought you'd be. Yeah. I think, um, cause my wife and I both turned 30 this year and it's, there's something about like those milestone versus the tens, you know, where you're like, Oh man, like, what are we, uh, are we doing okay here? And, and when we honestly reflect, we're like, yeah, actually like, God's been really, really good to us. Um, I don't think either of us imagined we'd have three kids by now. Um, yeah. But I am so glad we do, you know, and I don't think, I think if you would have asked me when I first signed to play pro ball that I would have, like, I would have only been the big leagues for this much or I would have been hurt for four years or whatever. I would have been like, no way, you know, I don't get hurt. I work too hard, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, well, no, God actually used that and, um, some of our fondest memories in baseball are in rehab. Um, yeah. So, and I mean, there is some reflection. We do reflect and my wife's a deep thinker, thankfully. So she keeps me, um, thinking deeper than I would on my own. Yes. I've, uh, had the privilege to meet your lovely wife and she's awesome. Um, I have to imagine such a big part of your rehab too, right. And trying to get back, get back to not just, um, physically, but emotionally and mentally back to try and pitch. Take me mm -hmm. to the first time you get on a mound to throw. Do you remember yeah. that day? Do you remember yeah. that moment? Yeah, that was, so I was in Arizona, really excited to start throwing. I felt good um, throwing on flat ground. So like, all right, let's get you up on the mound. And it was a real, it was a disappointing um, first one on the mound. Everything hurt. Um, ball wasn't coming out well. It was something about just the added angle, like the ankle just wasn't stable yet. Mm. Um, so it, it didn't go. It was not. <laughs> it was not great. And actually, it wasn't great until about five days before I left rehab to go join the AAA team. I was kind of like I was calling my agent, like I don't like I don't think I can get AAA hitters out right now. Like this hurts. I don't. You know. I, so I'm focused on the pain. I have no clue where the ball's going. Um, and then it just kind of clicked um, mm. and things took off. And I was like, oh, wow, there we go. And the pain that you're describing is like soreness, right? Yeah. So like there's obviously a ton of scars tissue in there now. It's they didn't reattach anything. They just let the body kind of so scar tissue holds it all together. So it's like the balance of like breaking up that scar tissue, but also like I need it. Um, it's yeah. like a form of protection. Um, and it, it was just really stiff. Um stiff but it not strong which is not a great combination how about the first game in iowa that you pitch and you're actually back yeah that was fun so that was uh in in omaha actually um so a familiar place and mm -hmm. uh i got to pitch and i came in did really well and i felt great physically felt that was one thing to come from the injury too, is I felt really calm and just joyful playing the game again, you know, like from that to being able to play again, I, it removed um, what we were talking about earlier about how the business side can steal the joy of the game. Not, not anymore at the end of the season. Like I was having so much fun. It was, and it felt great. I came in, walked off um, after getting the last guy out, walking the dugout, everyone's high five and like, man, that's awesome. Like what a, cool story, uh, really encouraging. So, um, that was a really fun, really yeah. fun game. And if we just ended the story here, Jason, it'd be great. And it'd be like, yeah, what an amazing comeback to pitch in triple a, yeah. but it actually gets better. You actually get the call back to mm -hmm. Chicago. And yeah. that's when I really, I remember cause you and I, I mean, we know each other, but I'm not like texting you every day. How's the rehab going? And right. I'm watching and all of a sudden I see you on the mound against the Cardinals and yeah at the end of the year thinking, yeah. wait a minute, Jason Adams is pitching in the <laughs> big leagues. How did this happen? Didn't he, 
like have that gruesome injury and he's back. <laughs> um, so you get that call, man. What an amazing moment yeah. that had to be. It was so cool. Yeah, it was. I was so excited to like hang up and, and, and tell Kelsey. Um, Cause you know, like it was just, it was something I hoped for, obviously, sure, but never expected, especially in those last few weeks in Arizona, where I was like, yeah, I, I can't even get Arizona league hitters out right now. What am I doing? Um, then it felt like it happened so quick. I was like, oh my gosh, like, God, how'd you, how'd you do this? You know, it was, um, that was a blast. Yeah. And in your first game, you come back, you're playing the Cardinals, a team that's battling for a playoff spot and eventually makes the playoffs mm -hmm. and you strike out all three batters, including Nor Nolan Arenado and yeah. Matt Carpenter. And I'm thinking, all right, Jay, this isn't just, you know, their triple a team that they're throwing out there in a meatless right. game. You're facing some pretty big time players. Describe your emotions and your feelings getting through that inning and yeah. going into the dugout. It was, I was, uh, it was a high. I was like, uh, like kind of, so it felt like, uh, kind of like my debut again, you know? Yeah. Um, almost better in a lot of ways. Like I just like that feeling of like, you're kind of like, wow, like this is really happening. This is, um, you know, and then just so much, um, like true joy. Like I wasn't out there thinking, Hey, like, Oh, if I walk this guy, what's like, am I going to get an option? Yeah, I, I couldn't have cared less. You know, I felt so free um, just playing the game um, and enjoying it. So that was a really, really fun time. When you think about all of what we just went through, that's why I wanted to have you on here because 2021 alone was just such a whirlwind year for you. Uh, turning 30, the injury up and down, pro baseball, opening day finishing with the Cubs. It's such a whirlwind kind of a year, really just a small, few, you know, eight months or whatever it was. When you think back and there's a lot of lessons that we've shared already, but what is the big lesson that you think God was teaching you in the midst of all that you went through in 2021? Yeah. Um, man, to narrow one, I think, um, I think just, he really wants to hound in um, or like really drill into me that like to trust him, not anything of this world, not my talents, not the coaching staff, not the front office. Um, so the two verses I had on my glove this year were Romans eight twenty eight. So God works all things together for good of those that love him. And um, oh, I'm blanking on the, uh, the address of the verse, but like some trust in chariots, some trust in, horses we trust in the lord our god and mm. and it was like that's what he taught me he said first off don't trust in like chariots and horses don't trust in your arm don't trust in anything other than me mm. and then two obviously and and if you do and when you do that i'm gonna work it all and even if you don't but i'll work it all for good for your good for my glory so you have nothing to worry about don't be anxious um so i think he just drilled those into me um and I look back on the year with great memories, thankfulness, and, um, you know, and I'm ho hoping and praying I can carry that into next year and not be so consumed with um, the stuff that is out of my control. Well, and then you have to put those scriptures to a test because at the end, it, it, we're not even finished with the story, really, because at the end of 2021, you're designated uh, for assignment. And again, <laughs> uh, non, you know, the, as great as that experience was, you now yeah. are again without a team and there's, you know, a lockout happening. So you don't know where you're going to be. Uh, certainly by the time this interview airs, you probably won't still be a team uh, that you're with yet. So now you got to kind of <laughs> put all this into practice, right, Jay, for 2022. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we keep finding ourselves wanting to go back to being stressed out, but um, I feel like he's almost like beating it out of us. You know, we're like, all right, got like, whatever, where, where do you want us to go? Um, and so, um, yeah, where, wherever we're up or whatever. Um, but the hope is you still want to pitch, obviously you want yeah, to, you want to want continue to here. And I, and I was encouraged, like, I got some good phone calls from teams like, Hey, we want to sign you. We just don't have time right now before, um, the lockout. Cause I was non-tendered about like less than 36 hours before the roster freeze started. Mm. Um, so yeah. it's like, you know, it sounds like I'll for sure have a job. Um, 
So just waiting to see where that is. And then we'll just have to spend a little extra on last minute rent for spring training. (laughs) (laughs) If there is a spring training, hopefully there is, but like, it's just crazy. Uh, the life that in many ways a pro baseball player lives, but I love Jay that you and Kels have this sort of North star that you always are looking towards and just letting God guide you guys uh, through this fun journey uh, as a dad now of three congratulations on that Thank and uh, just appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and maybe we'll get you back in a year and go through what happened in 2022 lord knows it can't be as crazy maybe it will be but it can't be as yeah. crazy as last year could it i i was certainly not right maybe i'm like god can we can we just have one calm year like yes. sitting in one location yes. well maybe maybe he'll do that for you either way it's going to work together for your good um and for his glory so jay thanks for being here on the show and all the best to you buddy Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again. And many thanks to Jason Adam for being here today on Sports Spectrum. What a story, right? I mean, that's just insane what he went through this past year. But just I was really encouraged by how he trusts in the Lord through it all and the good and the bad. And it's a great, I think, example for all of us that in the highs and lows of life, maybe none of us will ever make it to the big leagues and then you know, hurt our ankle in a way that he did or his leg the way that he did and still have to trust God through that. But we all go through struggles. We all have highs. We all have lows. God doesn't change through any of it. He's constant, right? He's going to work all things together for the good, the good and the bad. We like to use that Romans 8.28 when things are going bad and trusting that God's going to work it out for good. And that's really a great thing. But I think sometimes... We have to remember that even in the midst of what we think is good, God is going to work it all together for the good. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so Jason Adam really kind of laid that on my heart, I think, as I was listening to him share his powerful story, and we're just grateful that he did that here today on Sports Spectrum. We're grateful for you. Uh, We really are. We thank you for tuning in. This show wouldn't in many ways exist without you tuning in, without you checking us out, and without you telling somebody else about Sports Spectrum. We are the intersection of sports and faith, and we exist to bring Jesus the glory through the world of sports. And I think we did that today, hopefully, with Jason Adam. And uh, we just appreciate you for tuning in. If you could, click that subscribe or follow button on whatever app you listen to this podcast on, whether it's Apple or Spotify or even Amazon now that we're on Amazon Music and their podcasts. You can check us out everywhere podcasts are found, but click that subscribe or that follow button so that you never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. And then tell someone about Sports Spectrum. Maybe send them this conversation or send them another podcast that you heard here on the show and let them know about God working in the midst of sports and so many of these wonderful athletes that love Jesus. So thank you again for tuning in. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day, and please do stay safe.